with their eyes open, unmoving. They're laying in the mud, not bothering anybody, trying to go to sleep. This is just before I'm going to sleep. And I said, although the fish is not moving, not making any audible sounds, nor upsetting any currents, it can still give off an odor. And then they show some horrendously ugly creature approaching, a monster, and it had a long like beak on it. It was some kind of snail with a long beak that sniffs around for a fish that's asleep. And it approaches so stealthily, the fish doesn't even know it's coming. And when it gets within range of the fish, it emits some kind of toxins, which paralyzes the sleeping fish. And then horror of all horrors, it opens up some flapping thing and swallows the fish whole while it's paralyzed. And then when the fish is in the gullet of this disgusting creature that God made, it gives it, 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 it has a hook with a, uh, a toxin that kills the fish, and you see the fish thrashing inside the, the snail as it dies. And I said, my God, that looks like America's political system. And you could put anyone you want in any one of those roles. Who is the sleeping fish? Who is the snail, the ugly snail with the long snout that paralyzes its enemy and then destroys it? Oh, it's so ripe for a children's story. <laughs> what a fable that would make, wouldn't it? The sleeping fish. You want to scare children? and <laughs> You can tell them that story. And that's what I think we're like. We're like that sleeping fish. This entire nation seems like the sleeping fish. And the enemies of our way of life, internal and external, are injecting some kind of uh, toxin that paralyzes us on a daily basis, waiting to suck us into its, you know, gullet and inject us with the final toxin that kills us. That final toxin could be anything. It could be a nuke. It could be an EMP blast. It could be botulism released into the air. It could be smallpox released into a subway. It could be sarin gas released into a subway. And we're asleep or being put asleep by the great pretender in the White House. ISIS is not a threat, he says. A group of maniacs in a pickup truck. They're no threat, he says. Who's crazier, him or John Kerry? So, look, I could go on and on, and maybe you don't want to hear any more. Let's go to the callers. Rick on WMAL, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. Hi, Mike. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, I was uh, wondering, why is not anyone making – why is it no one making any kind of um, – showing any anger at the fact that these people, these Iranians – made one of our service members, the female, cover her hair. I mean, you don't do that to a guest. That is a prisoner. And the fact that... Well, well I, I can save you any anguish on that one. Hillary Clinton voluntarily did it, and so did Nancy Pelosi. So I don't think it was a great uh, a burden on the female sailor to cover her hair. I mean, uh, Pelosi did it. Hillary does it. They all do it. They, they surrender themselves. They surrender their own dignity. See, when they, they know that when in Rome you do as the Romans do, but it's apparently when, when they come over here, they don't do what we do. They want us to do what they do. How's that work? That's what you do in a conquered nation. You come into a nation, and instead of following their laws, you tell them, drop dead, follow Sharia law. That's the nation of a conqueror, a conquered nation. I agree. The only thing is that I was in the military, and I know for a fact that there's not a single female sailor that's on a fast boat that would do that willingly. At all. And that, that does not exist. And, not, and nobody brave enough to be on a fast boat is going to do that. That was... That was there's right, Rick, Rick were you on these fast boats that were captured by the Iranians? That type of boat, rather? No, I was not. But I've, I've, like I said, I spent years in the military. I know personality types. I know what kind of characters are on these boats. They're not timid people. Well, John Kerry was on one in the rivers of Vietnam. What does that tell us? God, you got a point. I can't argue on that one. <laughs> okay, that, I'm sorry. I don't mean to degrade your argument, but uh, he was on one. Eight five five four seven two eight two. Let's go to WDRC Radio. John, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Uh, I watched the whole speech last night, and I actually saw some disdain, anger, disgust, and hope in the faces of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You did. I saw. I saw men who had been compromised, and co they looked like they were being led around on a string. Well, yeah, but I, I, I did see anger and anxiety in that regard. Waiting. Well, when he, when I, Obama was sitting there denying that ISIS is a threat to us, did you see anything on their faces that indicated they knew otherwise? Uh, I did. I thought I did, indeed. Yes. 
Maybe you're projecting your own concern, because it looks to me like they're very happy campers working for the great uh, commander-in-chief, well, the academic uh, the academic commander-in-chief, who says that there is no threat from ISIS. And I know from your book, Stop the Coming Civil War, how Obama's degraded the military and replaced all the good commanders countless times. And I'm sure you think that these gentlemen are his puppets, but... Um, well, here's the thing. They're braver men than I am. They have served in combat, which I have not done. They're super brave men, but they're bureaucrats, and they take orders from the president, as all of their predecessors have done going back to George Washington. That is a given. However, the difference today is that ISIS is an existential threat to the United States of America, and we have a, an academic psychotic running the country who denies that fact. And for any military man to deny it along with him means that they are as culpable as he is. Thank you for the call. I don't know how else to say it. That was a nice little uh, diatribe and speech. It's true. I'm studying the hermit crabs. I want to buy a bunch of them. They'll become my new Silvermouth Turbo Shell Polished. $2.50. Silvermouth Camo Carno Shell. Camo Shell. $10. It costs that much a used shell. That's not a hermit crab. Green br Bruneus shell, 75 cents. I see people in Florida walking the beaches, cleaning up the beaches. Did you hear the story I read earlier about our great philosophy professor who was arrested for selling, exporting uh, uh, elephant ivory to China? You hear that story? Did you hear what I said the punishment should be? Mr. Zhang uh, was exporting elephant ivory to China. Now, you know, again, I'm going to repeat it so you hear me. I support those who protect our elephants. They're the most noble creature on the planet. They're not a hermit crab. They all may want to live, but the elephant is in another category. And to let people hunt them for their ivory, killing them sometimes while they're alive, taking the ivory out of their, their face, I mean, it's beyond comprehension. But then when you see what ISIS does, you can understand what the Africans do. They're no different. They hunt elephants from helicopters, some of these governments. They execute these elephant herds with machine guns. They leave the babies crying for their mother, and they kill the mother in front of the baby's eyes and take the ivory away to sell it to the pigs in China primarily. And now we have a Chinese professor here from China, philosophy professor, caught exporting the ivory. You hear this? There's only one punishment for anyone who deals in ivory. Strip them naked, drop them in the jungles of Rwanda naked, and let them know what it's like to be a hunted creature. Back in a minute. His ratings went down anyway. It was uh, much smaller than last year. I don't know what people were tuned into last night, but, you know, not everyone watched the State of the Union address like the world hung on his every word. It's not uh, it's not the same anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I know you expected me to get up here and bash him today for what he said, and I hope I didn't disappoint. But I led with something else, which is a huge embarrassment for this nation, which is the kabuki play of the two naval craft going off course and going aground on a large island and being rescued after being humiliated by the terror nation of Iran and then John Kerry congratulating Iran for returning uh, the men without harm. It was astounding. So seamless, isn't it, in its propaganda effects just days before the United States releases $70 billion in assets of Iran. So seamless, the Kabuki play. Not a question from Jake Tapper. Wolf Blitzer, on Blitzer, on Blitzer, on Katzenberg, on Hatzenberg and Ratzenberg, says Santa. Yes, indeed, he's Santa in the White House. WDRC, Brandon, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, though I don't agree with much of your political views, doesn't really matter. What I do highly agree with is your passion for wildlife, and I just wanted to let you know that the snail that you're talking about is the cone snail or cone shell. Uh, there oh, the, the the snail with the long snout at the bottom of the sea that sniffs out the sleeping fish? Yes, sir. They are highly toxic to people. They're being studied big time for their venom that they use. Wow. So you, are, you, are you a marine biologist, Brandon? 
I am not. I got to be honest with you. I currently I uh, cannot afford college. Um, but well, you're a pretty smart guy. I mean, if you're interested in this field, I wish I could help you with a scholarship. How old are you? Really appreciate that. Um, I just <laughs> just wanted to inform you. Yeah, they're they're extremely interesting. Uh, the venom is being studied for many different purposes. Uh, some of it medicinal. But, uh, of course, I, I'm a person who studied natural products chemistry for many years and looked in the plant world and the animal world. I had a professor who was an, an expert, by the way, in marine toxins, which he was looking. You know, uh, the difference between a, a poison and a medicine is usually just dose. You know that. Yeah, there was that. I know I go through that. I'm also very big on venomous snakes, so we go through that an awful lot. Uh, where poison is consumed as venom. Yeah, wait, if you're such an intelligent guy, how could you disagree with so many of the things I say? I don't say them for effect, Brandon. I study the natural world and I study the political world with the same uh, analytical mind. I mean, I don't come to these conclusions because I go in with a, I go into it with a bias. I, I fully understand. I fully understand. I don't want to. I don't want to argue that. I mean, all right. No, you're not. Okay, I get it. We don't have to. We don't have to debate it. The point is, is that you like my. Di diversion by talking about the fish and the snail. And what's the name of the snail again that does this to the sleeping fish? Uh, cone shell, or it's a uh, cone snail, or cone shell. They're called. I would say some of our worst politicians would mimic the cone snail. I'm going to tell you this: that I fully agree with. Uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I don't trust po don't trust politicians, and that's on on either side of the aisle. You know, it's just. The political world is, is something that I think you really need to be involved in for the majority of the population. You know, people just... Uh, to, to, to in order to understand who's saying what. It's a very complex world of moving parts. But, Brandon, today I played Joe Biden saying that the Navy didn't apologize, and, and two seconds later I played the apology. What does that tell you about Joe Biden? Yes, yeah, the, the, the political world, I just I can't trust any of that. And Bobby, yeah, but here's a man lying like, right to the world on a, on a television show. We didn't apologize. Brandon, listen, Robert, play Joe Biden, then play the apology if we have time. Brandon, thanks for listening. you got to play this for the audience on the way out the door. Joe Biden, then the apology, and you decide for yourself who's crazy. No, there's no apology. There's nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize the boat had a problem? No. There, and there was no looking for any apology. Okay. I mean, this was just standard nautical practice. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. Um, uh, in your GPS, uh, right? In GPS track, it is when you have the Vice President of the United States getting up on a television show not challenged by one of the, the dunces, and says there was no apology when there had been one, and then I play the apology, and the dunce on the television show doesn't lose his job, and the vice president isn't roundly condemned, then you understand what I mean by the government media complex, the one-party system, the Democrats or Republicrats. Savage Nation, good night. Savage.